Hey everybody, I'm back and I have the TAS 6 here again. A couple months ago I did a video on upgrading my TAS 6. I got a lot of great feedback from you guys. A lot of you messaged me and said, hey, I have a TAS 6 or I know people that have TAS 6s. There's not a lot of content out there for them. Make more. So I guess this is sort of a viewer requested video. So here we go. Uh, what I have sitting here, and I'll go to the other camera, is this is the M175. And this is the uh, tool head that will give us the ability to print 1.75 millimeter filament. Now, it's also got the Bontech extruder, and it also has a slice engineering mosquito hot end. Now, these are, I, I didn't get, these are top tier. I mean, th these are not cheap, okay? The, this is a great extruder. This is a great hot end. Uh, it's very easy to get these nozzles off and, and change them out to, uh, you know, to different sizes. So it's a great solution. I use the Mosquito and the Bontex all over the place in my print lab. So yeah, it's an excellent thing. And the uh, setup here with the tool head, they've done all the work for you. So basically all you have to do is bolt it on the printer and use their universal adapter and do a firmware update and, and off we go. But yeah, so here it is all in one. It's all put together for you by the folks at Lulzbot. And I'll just point out right now, this video is not sponsored by Lulzbot, but <laughs> just wanted to get that out there. Uh, so this is the other part of the puzzle that we're going to need here. This is the uh, universal tool head adapter. And what this is going to do is uh, this is going to attach to the M175. And this is going to give us the ability to plug this into the mount in the TAS 6. Um, like I said, the uh, the pros of this is going to be we'll be able to use all that 1.75 millimeter filament. Um, you know, as it is right now, I can only use 2.85. And in my lab, I only have two machines that use 2.85. That is the Ultimaker 2 and this guy. So it's nice to be able to have this tool head that can use the plethora of the materials that I have available to it. And uh, yeah, this is going to be really cool. I haven't done this ahead of time, so I have no idea what we're going to encounter, so we'll do it together. Are you ready? Off we go. Welcome back. Well, first of all, if you've never seen my channel before, my name is Paul. This is my channel where nerdy is cool. All about 3D printing, 3D printer upgrades, 3D printer reviews, filament. I've I've done R2D2 builds. I've made a Stormtrooper suit, a Batman. I mean, I'm, I've done some stuff. <laughs> so anyway, that's my introduction. If you haven't seen my videos before, I invite you to click the subscription link down below so you don't miss any of my fun videos. So let's move on to the task. Okay, a quick pause. I just want to point out that I am going to go through and show you the entire M175 attaching it to universal mount, uh, doing the firmware update and everything to get it installed on the TAS. Now, the reason I mentioned that is because after that install, I'm going to jump towards a modification because, well, you know me, I love modifications, which will lead to the BL Touch uh, modification for this printer. So this is kind of a two for one video. You're going to see the how the M175 is installed on this machine and then how I took it one step up adding the BL Touch mod. So I just wanted to throw in this little note so you understand the sequence and why I'm playing it the way I am. Okay, so I got the printer moved over facing me so I can do the work to it. I got the camera going. So first place to start is the instructions. So let's pull that up on screen right now. So this is the sales page from the store uh, for the M175 version 2. And uh, you can see over here in the specifications and under uh, resources and documentation. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. Installation, TAS 5 and 6. This is going to bring us to the Ojai Love Spot pages. So uh, here we go. Getting started. Follow the instructions below. This is going to go into our materials. So let me get the tool head off the print bed. And let's get this guy out of the package. It does have some chew holes because my cat is a jerk. <laughs> okay, there's that. And we got a couple screws in here. And I hang on to a few of these extra containers. Okay, so one, two, and one is kind of flattened, okay, and I'm gonna put, I have 
two washers. So I'm assuming the two washers will go on the matching two screws. <laughs> Okay, and these uh, flow tests always come in handy for handling small screws. All right, so I think we've already covered the additional items required. Uh, I don't have a mini, so that's good. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we have, okay, so yeah, just as pictured. Four millimeter for that, okay. Uh, printer is already in the off position, so we've got that taken care of. So let's work on getting this guy off. So we'll go to the stream cam here and move you over. Do I have enough cable to get you a little bit closer? Sure I do. So let's first start with... Uh, They're going for the green. Okay, so your first thought would be to grab that, but no, you want to grab this. So there's that. And you may recall from a past video, I just replaced this entire piece a little while ago. And poof, that's that's really hefty. Okay, an extra screw came out from somewhere on this tool head, so that's awesome. <laughs> All right, we'll put that aside. Let's go back to our instructions here. Okay, we just did that because we're an advanced user. Okay, mount the tool head to the adapter. All right, so our adapter is over here. So let's look at our pictures here. Okay, good job. Okay, so we have this guy and I'm gonna have to be a little clever with the cables here. Um, Okay, I see where that one goes. This cable is right smack in the way of where I need to put that. Okay. Let's look at the instructions one more time here. So that's going to be the flatter one, okay. There you go. Now oh, I got the red. Okay, and just a, that should be the flat one. So let's get you in there. Not too crazy tight, but there you are. Good job. Okay, now those guys are lined up. tight but I don't want to remember these guys are going inside of brass inserts 
in the plastic. So tight is good. Over tight is going to be bad because you would uh, remove the brass insert from the plastic. Okay. One more twist there. Give you one more just to make sure you're good. Oh, you had a few more left in you. Okay. One universal mounted. Nice. Let's go back to our uh, screen here. We had gone to the pictures. Yes. And then the next part. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's. Let's get these cables all together. Clip is here. There we go. There. That made a nice pleasing clicking sound. Sweet. Okay, let's mount the adapter. Gotcha. Let's make sure those wires are not in the way. Yeah, the back of the wires on this, kind of come close to that edge. Hmm. I'm running into a little snafu here with these wires being in the way. That's the click I was waiting for. And then the M3 Saga head screw. Doesn't want that washer there. Okay, I'm trying to get that in there just right. And then this has a nice little pin guard. And it's interesting how you gotta really bend this wire here. There we go. Now you're in there. Yeah, so the way that this is uh, kind of twisted around is, uh, I guess the word I always use is a little wonky, but okay, you're in there now. Okay, you feel like you're in there pretty good.
I'm looking at uh, the only thing I find a little interesting here is I don't want that wire being down there. I'd like that to be up a little. I'd like this to be a little higher like that. What can I tuck that on to make? Well, it looks like it's going to stay where it is. Okay. Okay, that looks like that is set there. Well, yeah, it looks like it's okay. I could be fussing the details, but that's all right. All right, let's see what the next steps are. Okay, update firmware. I knew that was coming. So let's uh, take a quick pause here and we'll install the latest version of Cure LE and then get this guy updated. Okay, we have the latest version of Cure LE installed. And this is from what I had previous, which was the TAS Pro XT. And on this computer, I don't think I've done anything with the TAS 6, so we'll have to add a printer. So we're going to go to TAS 6, and we're going to tell it we have the M175, and there we go. So let's click on Add. We're going to leave everything alone here, so we'll say Finished. Oh, look at that. We'll leave him there. That's fine. Okay, now next we want to go under here. We want to go to Manage Printers and make sure we have the tasks highlighted. We want to do a firmware update. Okay, so here we need to pay attention to a few things. Before updating, note, all machines Z offset. So what that means is I need to power the printer on. Okay, and we're going to go under here. Oh, uh, let's see. I think it's going to be under motion, but let me just look. Let me see about... I really wish I sold the knob. <laughs> I'll have to make a new one. All right, configuration. Offset. I have it at... Now, remember, I have a uh, different surface. 0 0.260. Um... The reason mine is that way is because on top of the glass, I have the wham bam. So I have a magnet and a spring steel. So my bed is a little taller. So let's get out of there. We'll go back to the info screen. Okay, let's go back to the uh, instructions. Uh, for TAS Pro, we don't have a TAS Pro. And for Legacy Machines, Mini 1, TAS 6, etc., E steps. I don't think we need to do anything with E steps, but. You know what? Let's just grab it anyway. Configuration. Where would I find you? Oh, it was probably back under motion, wasn't it? steps. Here we go. So my E steps are currently, don't know if you can see that very well, just because of the way it focuses, 420. I'll draw it down, but I don't think it's going to be important for what we're dealing with. Okay, let's uh, go back, go back, go back, go back. All right. Now, let's go back to that second monitor. After updating, Select a proper tool header from the printer's display. Okay, so hopefully this thing has a connection. Let's update the firmware. OK, 
Okay, firmware update completed. Okay, and it's restarting. Very good. All right, now they said after the update, we had to tell what tool head is on there. So let's make sure we want M70, 175 V2. Doo -doo -doo. And now, again, I apologize for the glare, but there you go. You can see where it shows M175. Next, I want to check two things. I want to go to the configuration, probes the offset. We may have to adjust this again because this is a different tool head. Okay, it's a 0 0.260, which is what we had before. All right. And let's go to configuration, advanced, steps. Okay, so they changed the steps to 415, and that's a common number with the Bontech extruder. Uh, when I've, when I've done these setups in the past. So that's, that's, a, that's a good number. So I'm not worried at all that it got changed. Okay, so you offset saved. Now, let's tip you down, look at you. Now the only thing I know is that I got a little bit of a blob on that nozzle, but I am really curious to see what's gonna happen when I tell this thing to auto home. Okay, good. Nothing's blown up. <laughs> Let's set the bar that low, right? Nothing's blowing up. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to load filament in this guy, and I'm going to go grab some. Okay, I got the M175 attached. I've done a couple test prints or just trying to get everything dialed in and I'm either too low or too high. So this is what led me to something else. So um, let me share on the other monitor here. So this is in the, uh, just for clarity, if you're looking for, if you go to Lulzbot, go under community and user forum, this is where the thread is and um, Great community, some very active members, and uh, Rothernot, and I do hope I'm saying his name correctly, a very active uh, community member here, offers a lot of support to people here. Um, he mentioned to me that, hey, you know, you could probably put a VL touch on that thing by just swapping out the duct. And I love the idea of this being as simple as he describes. I mean, he's an advanced user, so uh, I'm just, I haven't dug into Lulzbot machines a whole bunch as much as I have my other ones. So what I've done is I've printed this and I had the BL Touch available and he has a schematic. Oh, that's the other thing I'm gonna need here too. Um, you need a super long BL Touch cable to go from the print head uh, through the wiring uh, harness and into the electronics box. So that's the other part of this. But this is the board, and essentially the only thing we have to do, uh, we have those five wires that come off the BL Touch, and uh, so they're gonna replace Z over here, and then the BL Touch would go over here, and uh, I think I can zoom this picture in a little bit. No, I guess not. So he's basically told me everything I need, um, and then I'm just wondering, uh, you know, how am I gonna secure that in there? I might have to use a little bit of hot glue or something to keep that in there. But uh, yeah, so this project has gone a little bit sideways on me. I've asked him a lot of questions and uh, he's, uh, I, as I mentioned here, um, he's also given me not only the firmware, but he's also given me for Cura LE, this is the Lulzbot edition. Uh, so this is what I would change my um, stock um, 
G code, as uh, a start G code, and this is a cure LE. And he also uh, included some for Prusa Slicer, but I don't happen to use Prusa Slicer, so that's all right. Um, so yeah, so that's where I'm at. And as I mentioned, the BL Touch wire needs to be super long. So um, you know, obviously the one that comes with it. Usually I buy a lot of the 1500s. Um, but I've also bought a couple of these. It's too bad that their shipping is closed for the next week. I managed to, uh, thankfully, had some of these on hand. Actually, the one I have has a question mark on it. I think on another machine, I was wondering if the cable was bad or the BL touch. So this will be fun. Um, so let me go back here. So let me show you how, what I've done. I'm going to go to the wobbly little stream camera here uh, to show you. Uh, so what I've done is uh, you can see that BL touch wire. And uh, it's not a whole lot of fun putting it inside this kind of uh, bundle. I mean, it's certainly better than the woven one because you just wreck it trying to do it. But uh, yeah, I did get it all tucked in here and I have it uh, coming in through the extruder port. And uh, then from here, I just have it pushing into the uh, electronics bag. And uh, then I still need to, well, from the uh, Canon camera over here, I need to pop this panel open and uh, get access to uh, what he directed me to, to plug these into. So there's that. The other part of this, and again, I'm going to go to the stream cam, and uh, this, is the, uh, this is the mount. And uh, it was kind of challenging to get this to print just right because you do have all of this. It's a, it's a hollow structure. Um, this was printed in, um, i trying to remember. Oh, this is ABS. Yes, this is Ultimaker Green ABS. Um, did this at work on the Ultimaker S5. I used breakaway support. Um, for the support interface. So where the support touches, uh, I use that uh, material, which comes off really nicely. Um, I probably should have done it at a higher resolution. I did this at a 0.2 layer height and you can see the BL suffers a little bit here, but this should be a strong part. And on the other side of the machine, when I get over there, uh, I believe this should just be one screw on the extruder, pull that screw, that duct should come out, put this new duct in. Before I do that, though, as he mentions in the graphics, uh, this is going to go in just like so. And I've grabbed a couple M3. These are eight millimeters long and just eyeballing, you know, where everything fits. I could technically just thread into that plastic and maybe that would be fine. But given this is a probe, it's going to go up and down a great deal. Uh, I got some uh, M3 nylocks here, uh, so that will uh, help secure everything in place. And uh, it looks pretty interesting. So yeah, so this started as, hey, let's just put the tool head in here to <laughs> something else completely. Now with this modification, um, we will no longer be using these leveling discs and no longer using that purge strip, which I'm fine with. I, I'm not convinced that these leveling dots are the best thing um, for what I'm trying to do. And the wipe, I mean, as novel as the wipe is, I mean, it's kind of cool, but watching how much that tool head bounces around on that thing, not my favorite thing in the world. So um, it won't do that. So it'll do like my other printers. Uh, it will, I can either set it up to a prime strip like I do. It does a little line here. Uh, the way that he has it set up is he's just using a skirt, which is also a good process too. The other thing that I got to fix here too, I just noticed is I need to, uh, uh, I want to make sure these wires stay nice and snug in here. There we go. And I believe I, should, I could probably strap those in there a little bit tighter from below, but that is a moving area here. But uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to get this. Uh, I mean, this was brand new in 2017. So yeah, she's a loud girl and she's very rugged. Um, doesn't have the fastest motion system because it's dragging such a, you know, big heavy bed. It's dragging a big heavy tool head, but, um, you know, it's still capable of doing some good stuff. So off we go. Lots to talk about. So, few things. Um, so, definitely don't like that the way this has been a little bit wiggly. It's not terrible, but I mean, it's it does have some movement here. Um, so we have everything unhooked. Now, one of the things that I'm trying to do. Oh, my uh, phone keeps on beeping. Let's quell that. Um, I don't like the gap that this thing has here, as I've pointed out before. So one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to try this 3D printed piece that I made. And this is basically a, I've just taken the top of this and made it a little taller. And instead of this being a hole, 
this is now an ellipse, so it has a little bit of room to, to move around over there. Uh, once I get this off of here, we'll uh, show it better. So let's uh, get some tools here. And and that is off. And then we remove this. Also received a uh, replacement. Uh, I got a new BL touch that showed up, so this is a known good one. So we can take that old one off and put a known good one in there. Let's put you here. Now for some fun. Now the fun part is getting this. And remember, there's a little attachment back here. So what we're hoping for, remove some wires here. So this bolts into the top. It's snagged my microphone. So this is gonna snag in. And then back here, I have a little bit of room to move this. Now what I'm looking for are these guys. We will start with the top. And yes, I know, I have committed a cardinal sin by not having matching green, but. Okay. One is in. washer on there. All right, we don't want to break anything. And then we have a flat head so we can kind of Use you okay that looks good so that is in there all right drum roll let's see if this goes in any better let's switch cameras let's move you up over here and actually I'm gonna move you over here as well too. Actually, we'll go with the stream cam because that might be the best angle. Hmm. So I'm looking at how you are supposed to fit in here, but I hate how these wires are in the way. Now it could be me. <laughs> and let's get the zoom lens in here because that's what I'm lining up to. Actually, are you dead center? Now you are. Now, let's look at the old one. Now you're supposed to sit in like that. And then that looks good. That bottom goes up on one side. It's really weird. It's a weird shape. So let's put you in here. Oops. I, I don't like these cables being in the way. Um, let's get 
this. That's my other hand. Let's get this and the washer. Let's go to the other camera. By George. I think we did it. I feel like that's an improvement. This ate up a lot of time. I don't know, maybe I just got lucky the first time. So in the first graphic, let me just blow this guy up here. Um, they're showing you the BL touch and they're showing you where these wires are supposed to go. You know, yellow here, green here, and this, from what I can tell, is not correct. Um, someone had kindly posted a link to an actual upgrade guide here. And what this shows here, I don't know if I can make this any bigger. I don't have Adobe on this machine, so it's not gonna go any bigger here. Uh, but essentially it's showing what's supposed to be the connections here. And this is supposed to be um, orange, brown, and red. And j just so you know, um, uh, let me uh, uh, pull up another graphic here real quick. Eventually I'll get it right here. And by default, our VL touch wiring, you know, has yellow, red, brown. So we basically need to, because the red is in the middle by default, we need to pull the red out and the brown out and swap them around so that we have this uh, yellow, which <laughs> this looks very orangey, but that's all right, um, brown and 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 red and they also show it here when it's plugged in at a connector as well so when it's all said and done you know you have the yellow brown here in the middle and red and it's not a great picture then it shows uh, this end stop here so this is a little <laughs> why doesn't these things come easy for me but anyway this was the results of the uh, as you can see a bigger picture here this was the uh, bed leveling uh, building the mesh using the bed visualizer with OctoPrint. And as you can see, this is my Y axis, this is my X, so this is the front, these are the sides. So I'm um, pretty low on this side. Uh, so if I want to kind of get everything back up to over here, we need to bring these guys up. Uh, less so this one, but yeah, definitely. So I posted my results to the uh, forum over here where it's been kind of fun working with Rothenot on this. Uh, you know, and he points out, yeah, we're less than a millimeter, so we're not, you know, terrible. Uh, but again, we want to make it mechanically level, and he suggests putting a shim between the rubber pad and the glass. And let me show you what that looks like. Let me uh, quickly unscrew this. So what happens is, let me get to the stream cam over here. The, uh, it's usually using these washers for the bed leveling, but under here, is the glass bed touches the corner of this. I'm not sure the lighting's gonna play night. Here we go. And this is the TPU material. So what we wanna do, if we want to raise or lower this, well, if we wanna lower it, we gotta remove the material, but if we wanna raise it a little bit, we need to put a shim under here. And he has been kind enough to provide just that. So we'll go back to the second monitor and let me move some stuff around over here. I got stuff falling everywhere, great. So, he indicated he's <laughs> having some fun with his. Uh, and then after, a bit better. So, he points out this, and then he offered me a file. Um, 
up here. And that's what this is. Now what we do, his original file, I think was set for uh, close to a millimeter. So what I've done is I've made three copies of it. And as he suggested, we need to go 0.5 on two corners and 1.0 on another. So what I've done is I remove the uniform scaling uh, because we only, we only want to scale one thing, which is how thick it is, which is Z. So this one and this one, pay attention up here, is 0 0.5. And this one has to be one millimeter, and that's what it is. So I can send this off to the printer, and it'll take about 20 minutes to make these shims. Unfortunately, it won't be Lulzbot green, but that's okay. We'll, <laughs> we'll get by. So we're going to start on this, and then we'll put those shims in. And, uh, I mean, it doesn't really... I might have some Lulzbot green. Let me see what I can pull off here. And it's been done. So we have done... A 0.5 in the back left, a one millimeter in the back right, and a 0.5. So hopefully, with any luck, our bed visualizer will look a little bit better than it did last time. All right, let's see how it turned out. Ooh, I'm happy with that. Okay, it's editing voice Paul. So first layer went down very nice. This is the second layer going on. Uh, like I said, between the bed being as mechanically flat as I can make it uh, and the mesh working really good, I did a little bit of baby stepping. Um, this test print and others that I've been doing have come out really great. Here we are, we're kind of at the recap now, in case you've skipped ahead. So this is, let's go through what worked, what didn't work, uh, things we fixed along the way here, uh, just to kind of sum things up. So first of all, we were trying to get this M175 using the universal mount and attaching it to this X gantry. And notice early on, we had a pretty good wiggle going on no matter what I tried to do. And the solution, and thankfully because they're open source, these files were available, uh, contacted Lulzbot, they gave me the source for the SolidWorks file and went ahead and they made some changes. And so basically what I did is I made this piece up top here a little bit taller. We extended out that groove a little bit more. Uh, same thing in the back. And because I feel that for whatever reason, I needed a little bit more space up top to get this to securely mount in place. Uh, so that was solved. That was great. So one problem solved. Then as we moved over to the BL Touch, we had two issues over there. So first of all, we needed to find the right size BL touch wire because there's a significant amount of uh, <laughs> cable uh, back here uh, to make it back to the electronics box. I had a one meter long cable and then came up significantly short. So the magic number is 1.5, <laughs> 1.5 meter. And you can get those at phyllistruda.com. They've been fantastic. So that size will get you all through this cable harness into the electronics box with room to spare to make it to the control board. And that's when issue number two occurred because the schematic I was looking at, it, it didn't make sense. But fortunately, there was a PDF document that someone else shared that talked about step-by-step -step exactly what you have to do as far as where you connect on the control board and exactly the pin layouts because with the stock BL touch wire, you're gonna to have to move two wires over and that's easy. You lift up the flap, you move the wires and, and off you go. So we got that resolved. Now, fortunately, um, got a lot of help from the folks at Lulzbot on the former expressor, especially Rothernot and uh, with his custom firmware. So we got that flash. The first try didn't work because he had a special setup with his second extruder. So um, let him know he fixed the firmware and we got that resolved. And then we did some work on the start G code. And what we're doing with the start G code is we are no longer using these leveling spacers. I'm not a fan of them. Um, BL touch is the way to go. And with his firmware, what this is doing is when it, <laughs> we made some tweaks to the start G code. So what happens is when a print starts, I have the bed heating to 60 degrees Celsius, and this is gonna go through, and it's gonna do a five by five, 25 point bed mesh. And once it's completed that, then it's gonna heat up the hot end, it's gonna start the print, and when it starts the print, it's gonna do this little prime line, is what you're seeing right here. 
And because sometimes as it heats up, you'll get some dribbles coming off that nozzle and doing that little purge line, which is something I have on the start G code of most of my machines works fantastic. Did a little bit of baby stepping to get that first layer just right and had issues. <laughs> so the issue, let me go to my other camera here. I was noticing that no matter what I did, I was still getting these crazy gaps. I, I it, it made no sense. I, I had, as best I could tell, you know, I had the Z offset perfect, the, but even the layers looked a little bit wonky and I just could not figure it out. And it turned out to be, oops, sorry, wrong camera. It turned out to be that, and here's a sidebar. If you have an old 3D printer, this is the machine from 2017. It's been bounced around from location to location. And I had noticed on a couple of occasions that there would be a black M3 screw sitting around that I have no idea where it went to. So what happened was on the bed underneath uh, where the attachments are, uh, where it attaches to these uh, bed rails, there were all kinds of screws missing. So <laughs> a little note to yourself is that if you're encountering any weird travel motions or some other issues, it's always the cheapest part of the 3D printer, the M3 screws. So in this case, by tipping the machine upside down, I noticed several screws were loose. I had nine missing, so I threw my inventory. They're M3 eight millimeter. I got those in there. Everything is now snug and tight. I went around the rest of the machine <laughs> with the Allen wrench, just checking for anything that might be loose. Started to print again. And then let me show you over here. And again, I'll go to the correct camera. You can see that that first layer is, and again, I'm, I'm, this is a little too far away because it's a little gappy, but I found the sweet spot and that's where you want to be. So we're no longer dealing with those crazy, crazy wonky gaps. We're actually getting some good prints. And that's when we did our cat test print and I've done a few others as well. And of course, this is my setup where I use, this is a poly box, dry box. Uh, it's got desiccant inside. I'm using a reverse Bowden. Um, so basically I'm protecting the material from any kind of moisture and connects directly into the M175. So that's the setup. And again, I'm very pleased with the way this is working out. One question you might have is, well, what if I want to change tool heads? Well, in this configuration, I really don't want to change tool heads. I really like the ability of using 1.75 millimeter filament because I have walls of it. <laughs> and the other thing is that you know, yes, I do have, you know, the 1.2 millimeter tool head that they have. I have a couple other of their tool heads as well, too. But if I do that, I lose my BL touch. I have to change the firmware and I, I kind of go backwards a bit. So I didn't want to do that. What I like being able to do is with this Mosquito hot end, it's really easy with the Mosquito wrench just to go ahead and unload the filament, pull that nozzle out, put a new nozzle in. So I have the whole spectrum of nozzles that are available from Slice. So in there right now is a 0.6. If I decide I want to have a big fat nozzle for some big prints, I can put a one millimeter, a 1.2, 1.4, whatever. And I just have to adjust cure accordingly, just letting it know what nozzle size is in there and the bead, um, the width of the bead that I'm using. And that leads me to another point. So now, yes, I could continue to use Cura LE, but the rub with Cura LE is, is about a year and a half behind the production Cura as far as features. Now, the, the reason is Cura, I mean, I'm sorry, Cura LE and Lulzbot, they do a lot of special things as far as their whole heat up, the way that their bed leveling works with these, you know, knobs and such, and, and that's fine. But I, I like using the latest version of Cura because I, for my job professionally, I mean, I do 3D printing, so that's what I know. And I wanna use the latest version uh, on the 3D printer. So uh, with the help of using the basic configuration information, you know, the bed size and the travel speeds and, and such like that, I copied that over from Cura LE into Cura uh, with my custom G code with the assistance of Rothernot again from the web form. Uh, and then the changes we made, I'm doing all my printing now from Cura 5.71, which is the current release version uh, as of May 2024. Okay, and I'm sure another question you guys must be having is, why are you wasting your time on a seven-year-old 3D printer? Because it's fun. I mean, these things, I mean, I did a video way back when about, you know, some of the printers I wish I could afford at the time. And that was many years ago, and the Lulzbot Taz was one of them because back when I made that video, this was considered a large 3D printer. And of course, now we have 
600 by 600 by 600. We got the big guy here in the corner and others. And certainly there are, I have other machines that can print faster, print quieter, uh, and probably do a lot of things better than this. I mean, this has a pretty beefy, big, it's got a huge print head. The Y-axis is pretty slow. So this is not the kind of 3D printer that is going to be printing very fast. But even at slower speeds, it can print very well. So I like it. And the other thing is, you know, making this upgrade to the 1.75 filament is a real plus. It's got the modern hot end, so I can change out those nozzles. So certainly it's still got some life left to it. So uh, am I wasting my time on it? I'm just having fun with it, really. And I wanted to share that with you because there's a lot of these old TAS 6s out there. There's a lot of workhorses out there. The workhorse just doesn't have the lead screw. It has the belt instead. So there's some improvements there. Um, every now and then I sniff around Facebook Marketplace looking around for a used one because, again, I have a soft spot for these printers and I certainly enjoy spending a little time on them and seeing if I can make them work a little bit better than they were originally designed. So there is that. So that's it for this time. If you're wondering what I'm up to, please check out my social media. I am on Facebook, I am on Instagram, and I'm on Twitter, and of course you're on YouTube. So be sure to check all those links out. Also, I want to thank my friends at Lulzbot on the forum, uh, especially Rothernot and other people that contributed and gave me a few ideas as far as how to make this upgrade possible, the G-code and firmware and such. I appreciate that. It's fun to share this video and give you guys the recognition that you deserve. And that is it for this time. Be sure to check out down in the description below. I have all kinds of affiliates and coupon codes that can save you money. So check those out. Until next time, thank you for watching. And remember, please print safe.